All right, here we are. That's not what I, that's not what's happening right now. Mm. All right, so I can't tell if we're, ah, oh, maybe now. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I'm live. I think I'm live. Um, all right. If you can hear me, Facebook land, please, um, please say hello. Okay, great. <laughs> Yay. Okay, let me click over here. All right. Welcome, everyone. Sorry, I'm still getting used to this whole Zoom pushing Facebook live situation. So thanks for um, thanks for your patience. <laughs> A little technical difficulties. It's user error. So um, welcome. Happy Saturday to everyone. Um, I'm really excited today. We're going to talk about swords, and I'm thrilled about that. I'm going to introduce our next guest instructor. Uh, before we do, I want to just tell you a little bit, uh, give you some updates on a few things. And for those of you that don't know what FCBDU is, um, I just want to tell you a little bit about it. So first of all, I had uh, some people ask me, what does the U stand for? And I thought, oh, I guess that's not totally obvious. <laughs> So um, I had, you know, was it, is it stand for like you as in like, you know, you as the people, does it stand like, what does it stand for? And so the U in FCBDU is like, uh, like university. So it's your university for all things Fat Chance Belly Dance style. Here in the US, and I don't know how it is around the world, um, we say you for university for a lot of different schools, but you can't actually call something a university unless it's like this government entity that's truly a university. So FCBDU was uh, the name that, uh, actually Carolina came up with that name and I was like, that's brilliant. That's exactly what it is. Sorry, I'm fixing my, I, my makeup, which we're gonna have a makeup artist in just a few weeks. Um, so I was like, that's exactly what it is. That's perfect. So that's what FCBDU is, FCBD University. So it's like FCBD style university <laughs> everything that you want to learn about it and it's still in a it's still in its infancy stage right so i we're really lucky to have as many members as we do and thank you for trusting us um so so far we have about i don't know 50 something hours of content over 20 ish courses already and four instructors as of today uh, four or five instructors as of today and then four more that are coming soon so just constantly growing and um, as I learn what the community wants, I'm actually going in and, and making plans to do all those things as well. Um, the latest and greatest update is now you can go to fcbdu.com and it will take you directly to fcbdu. Imagine that. <laughs> so like I said, we're going to we're just learn, growing as we go, um, introducing new instructors all the time. There's a mixture of courses on our site that maybe you've taken before on Carolina's Patreon, or maybe you took a class with me online and it's on FCBDU, or maybe you've taken a class with this guest instructor um, online. And so we have a mixture of things that have been offered previously online that maybe a lot of people didn't know about or haven't been uh, a part of, and then new video content coming out all the time. So most of our new instructors, it's all brand new content. In fact, I just spoke with one on Thursday and they were like, oh my gosh, it's two hours. How do I get this down into one? So really excited about all of those things coming up. Um, also, you know, more growth, the video quality, I, I got a new program that actually compresses into a much better quality. So the stuff that I film on 4K will actually be going to FCBDU as 4K. So I'm really excited about starting uh, that venture this week, just kind of recompiling a lot of things that are out there. So always learning, always growing. And yeah, just thank you for joining us. So um, this is a place, FCBDU is a, is a place that I wanted to create to bring together community, our global community of amazing dancers, amazing teachers, people that you might not have heard of before. Maybe they don't travel as much or um, they, you know, they don't, they're, they're not traveling and teaching. They're only teaching in their homes or out of their home 
area. And so people just don't realize how amazing they are, or what they have to offer. And so that's what FCBDU is. Not only is it Carolina and Mega and some of our other instructors that are coming on, but it's also instructors that um, that I know that I've worked with or that Carolina or Mega has known and they've worked with and just really um, wanted to introduce to more of the global community so that you can get to know them too. So that's what we're doing today. So I'm about to, I'm about to announce our next instructor and get on with it. But um, just a note, if you have any questions, feel free to post them. I'm, I'm gonna look over here on occasion because I have um, the comments pulled up. So feel free to um, chime in if you have any comments. And then I also have my notes, so I'm looking down here as well. So just kind of looking through the comments. Hey, hey, KP, glad you're here. Um, Pilar, hello, hello, Anna. Um, and good morning, Charlotte. Malai my, uh, might be on my side, but my sound is fading. All right, well, hopefully it's gonna be okay going forward. So if not, I will see, I will save this and post it afterwards, but we should be good. Hello, McKenna, good morning. All right, so um, our next guest instructor. First, I wanna say, I'm not, for those of you that know me, I'm not a huge prop person. I have danced, I've danced, of course, with props. We've used baskets and Daviani and swords and Daviani and we did veils, although I'm like, eh, <laughs> on, on, some of, on some of the props, but I really enjoy watching the props. Um, I just focus a lot on the core foundations and the core technique, um, but I really do love all of the props. Um, I especially love sword and we did in Daviani, we've done old school sword. So old school sword, there's a lot of dancing with the sword balanced on your head and playing the finger symbols all at the same time, floor work, things like that. So if you've ever seen some kind of like old school sword work, then that's a little more familiar. And then several years ago, when people started coming out with a dialect, there has since been a sword dialect, veil dialect, basket dialect, some amazing dialect has come out of this. And um, so I've been interested in sword dialect for a while, but I was, again, hesitant because I love the posture that we have in our style. I love the movements. And so, you know, sometimes when you start incorporating props, some of those things have to set aside. Like maybe the posture isn't the same because you have to turn your arm a certain way in order for the veil to work or the basket to work. Um, so I just haven't really dove into it too much, but the, the sword dialect I'm really interested in. And the reason I reached out to this instructor is we've worked together on some different projects before and performed together. And I just really love the way that, um, that they approach the sword and maintaining the posture, maintaining the integrity of all of the movements. So I really love this sword, uh, the sword dialect. So without further ado, we're gonna talk a lot about swords today. So I want to introduce our next guest instructor, Jen Sardina. Yes! Hey. <laughs> I feel like I just like jumped in. <laughs> I love that entrance. I love that entrance. <laughs> so welcome, Jen. Jen's joining us Thank from you. her beautiful backyard in the Pacific Northwest. So she lives about what, two or three, two hours for me, two to three hours for me. Yeah, ish. roughly. Yeah. So you've come to Portland and we performed before and um, of course, we've been together in various events. So really, really glad that you're here and that you wanted to be a part of FCBDU. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, so just kind of get started. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Like just who is Jen? Uh, how long <laughs> has Jen been dancing? All of those great things. Okay. So um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jen Sardina. Um, I have been dancing, oh God, since I was like two, but um, <laughs> Um, I grew up in a Middle Eastern household, so my grandmother introduced me to belly dance really early on. Um, so I did a little bit of everything. I've done, you know, cabaret, I've done um, fusion and folk and you name it, I've probably done it um, probably pretty informally. Um, but I started really getting into dance and um, performing per se when it, it was about 1999 is when I got really serious about it when I moved to Salt Lake City. Um, so I have been performing fat chance style for, God, when did I start that? It's like 2000, I want to say 2004, maybe? 2004 is when I um, actually met um, Carolina and I saw um, fat chance for the first time. 
in Salt Lake City and I was like oh my god I gotta do that <laughs> <laughs> so I had been dancing some uh folk fusion type of stuff and some cabaret before that for uh probably a good three four five years before that and it was fun but it wasn't you know it wasn't the troop like I didn't have the camaraderie that I really wanted and then I saw them on stage I was like I gotta do that immediately so I started learning that and did general skills in 2007 and I got teacher training in 2009 and it's all been downhill from there <laughs> um, well, depending on how you want to look at it I was like or uphill whatever uh, uphill sounds hard so we'll go downhill <laughs> Um, uh, also let's see, I'm a pharmacist by day. Um, I am a neonatal obstetric pharmacist, so I work stupid hours in a hospital. Um, so this is kind of my out and my fun time. I get to hang out with my friends and share what I really love doing, which is sword. Um, and I was one of the original founding members of, uh, Divina Tribal Collective, which most people will know the sword dialect from, uh, ATS with an H. So that's where all of this stemmed from and then now i am a co-founder co-director of damiana dance company up here in the beautiful northwest with my co-partner uh kara uh Kassel. and i miss her very much because we haven't seen each other <laughs> for a very long time she just had a baby hi kara her second congratulations. baby congratulations I know her second baby. Yes, we are today too by the way watching hi kara i miss you <laughs> Um, but yeah, they just had their second baby and she's a little busy right now and, you know, COVID and all that fun stuff. So I haven't really seen much of anybody. So I've been hanging out online with, you know, various folks like everybody else and, you know, doing the sword thing on the side. Cause I can't. Nice. Yeah. 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 So you've been in the, in, in the fat chance style scene for a while. Um, so like, so the, the, the dialect of the different props. So this is how, this is how, this is why I haven't studied any of it yet, yet, right? So yeah. back in the you day, will <laughs> yet, right? I, I, I ordered my new sword, so I'm excited <laughs> about it. Um, back in the day, you know, there's, there's, there's OG style props like baskets and veil and swords. And then um, once dialect kind of started getting out and people were exploring and practicing there was a period of time where um people were experimenting with swords and baskets and veil and a lot of those experiments lost the you know they, they were they were playing around right trying to figure out this out so a lot of the dialect lost some of the posture and the technique of the movements and so i just wasn't really I was like, well, I'm just going to come back to that later. <laughs> but yeah. since then, there has been some great, amazing dialect come out. Like Lisa has her basket dialect. Um, Terry and Lisa have their veil dialect. And then the sword dialect from ATS with an edge. So I feel like it's kind of like made its made its uh, made its way into being more um a, more improvisational right because before it tended to be more choreography and yeah. uh, because it wasn't really follow followable is that that's going to be a thing now. that's a word in the last few years with my friends coming out with these different dialects that i know and trust you know i'm like ah okay now I feel like I can jump in it, you know. So <laughs> now I can try. <laughs> now I can do it. So I'm like, I'm gonna learn Lisa's dialect, and I'm gonna learn the veil, and I'm gonna learn the, learn the sword dialect. So um, yeah, so I'm really excited about sword. So I have, I have this sword. <laughs> right? This is, this That's is an old probably, school sword right there. Yeah, old school sword right here. This is probably what most people yep. that danced with sword, you know, back in the day have. And I don't know yep. what the name of this sword is. Is it Saroyan sword? I, don't I think it was originally a Saroyan sword. There's lots of knockoffs of it now. Okay. Um, most people have knockoffs because the, the original Saroyan swords are super expensive. Okay, well, this so is the really, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna say the really heavy ones, the really nice ones with the full on hilts and everything like that are super duper expensive. So um, most people have the a knockoff version, which are still really nice. So okay. um, it, depending on how they're weighted, um, yeah. any sword will work. So those ones um, I choose not to dance with for a couple of reasons. One, a lot of the arm stuff that we do makes it really hard to do with that hilt. So if you can see the hilt mm -hmm. on there, um, there's like a grip, yeah, right? So it's got, arm. and then on the, in, on the outside, there's like a cover, right? So like a grip guard. Um, yeah. When you're holding the sword on the inside, 
um, and you're going to do arm work or you're going to do free work, that gets in the way. Ah, So while you can do that, um, and a lot of people really love those swords, uh, I chose the Hawksbill instead for various reasons. Yeah. (laughs) Actually, I'll show you that now. Yes, we're doing swords to sew and tell. Show and tell swords. So these are the Hawksbill scimitars. So the the reason they're Hawksbill is you can see they've got the little hawk on the top. Uh Um, I know, right? So oh. <laughs> I know, I know, right? Um, these are um, also known, they, I think they call them the handway swords um, online. I'll give you more information about that in a second. But this one is one that you can't really find anymore. So okay. there's a lot of different reproductions. I was lucky enough to get one of the original swords from people long before swords were like a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the difference is, is it's got uh, leather wrapped handles so it's actually wood underneath here but it's a, a leather wrapped and then the brass hilt and pommel um, mm-hmm. a lot of them are like they're steel that has been tinted if you will so they're not always brass um, and brass is a little bit lighter than steel as you can imagine and then the the sword itself um, has the little bit of the scimitar shaped on the end mm-hmm. um, and i find that these are easier to dance with than the other swords for a couple of reasons one, they're heavier, which is counterintuitive, right? You yeah. would think that a lighter sword would be easier, and right. that's not true. <laughs> Those yeah. ones move a lot. So that's why another reason why I didn't like the other style of sword is because the hilt is super heavy. So the hilt is heavier than the blade usually. And so if you're not just going to balance it and leave it alone, moving with it, putting it on and off your head is really tricky. Um, and yeah. trying to get, well, that's yeah. The with these, like OG sword, which actually I've, we're going to have that on SCBDU much later, but OG sword, we, we put it on our head and we didn't move, you know, like it was everything. It was basically doing the movements in the vocabulary with the sword on your head. And there were some changes that we had to make when we danced fast, because, you know, you can't move your arms in an Egyptian with a sword on your head like that. You can, but it's tricky. (laughs) Right, right. So there are some different things like Egyptian is a quarter turn with the arms at counter height, like some of those OG things. But that, that's a great point is, we didn't take the sword on and off except for at the beginning and at the end. At the end, yep. So it wasn't a huge, we weren't moving around like we are, yep. like we, we do in dialect. So, okay, so sorry, I just had to say that. <laughs> no, you're fine. Don't, don't jump in whenever. So that's <laughs> that's one of the main reasons why I don't use that one. Um, it's, it's hard to keep on and off your head when you're moving through the dialect. Um, and then the other thing is, is the curvature of the sword. So this has a nice curvature. Right, and it has a really good, easy, ba- easy to find balance point. Mm-hmm. I really can just set it on there and leave it alone. And you have to fiddle with that one to find your balance point. Yeah, because that right. hilt is Where so heavy. Is right. Yeah. So trying to get four people on stage doing that all at the same time without making it awkward was really hard. <laughs> yeah, that's what we wore. T- we, we, t- we made what we called tacos in our headdress. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's totally. right. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 I all this too. fabric and you would you'd separate the fabric like right here. You'd have a roll of fabric and then yep. a roll of fabric and you just like set it in there and you were like done. I mean, we could yeah, like, end I'm the out. song. I don't have to do anything Exactly. Else. <laughs> you didn't even have to worry about it. At the end of the song, we would start calibrated spins and then like pick it up and end the song with the arms over, with our sword overhead. And we didn't have to worry about it. And that was our trick. But we don't really wear big headdresses like that anymore. Nope. So these lighter swords don't stay. No, they don't stay head. where they're supposed to anymore. So what I use is, um, uh, and what I recommend for most people is a uh, cotton-based um Oh, head wrap, if you will, or headband, something that's flat and cotton because it doesn't slip on your hair and it doesn't get slippery under the sword. Mm -hmm. Um, That can be anything you want it to be, right? But if cotton is usually the best. Um, Some people will actually uh, put a strip of um, sandpaper or sometimes they'll put Gorilla Glue or something like that if they want to balance it directly on their hair. My hair is super slick. So while I can balance it on my hair, I tend not to because as soon as I put anything on my hair, it just comes right off. Right. Which is yeah. not the end goal, right? So <laughs> <laughs> um, I tend to have a um, headband of sorts that has, um, like, we're talking minuscule padding. So you can still feel the weight of the sword and the location of the sword. Yeah. But as long as it's a cotton base underneath, it tends not to slip. 
So what I do, and I don't have it out here, but um, I have a um, headband that I have put adornment on. So coins and studs and whatever else I wanted on there. And that's what I practice with constantly. Okay. So I have the one thing that I love performing with. And when I practice, that's what I use. So a lot of people will use, you know, scarves or a headband or whatnot that they use just for practice. And they keep their nice ones, you know, in the closet. And then you get on stage and you're like, I don't know where my balance point is. And I don't know how slippery this is. And you put the sword on your head and off it comes. Oh my gosh, so, that's a great point. So practice practicing. with what you're going to wear, like have a your exactly. favorite sword headband. Okay. Yep, definitely. Um, so that's one of the ways that you can basically make sure it stays where you put it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other thing is, is sword length. So the, the movements themselves were designed with a 38 inch sword. So that's what originally was designed on all the movements from the um, initial all the way up to the duet stuff that Kara and I put together. Um, you can dance with shorter swords. So that's the number one question I always get is what sword should I get, right? Mm -hmm. that's, um, my, that's my question. I, <laughs> like, what do I get? I don't know. I got, I yeah, they all like I did. <laughs> what do I do? Um, so that is a good question. So you can dance with whatever sword you want. If that's the sword that you want to dance with, by all means, dance with that. Make sure that if you're going to dance with it in troop, that you do it all at the same time, everybody the same sword, because the whole idea of uh, fat chat style, right, is everybody is one unit, one one group, right? Yeah. So you're trying to do everything together and kind of match everybody. Um, if you have that one person that has a different sword, so say you have you have that sword and I have this sword, it's going to look real weird. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to look a lot more badass than I am. <laughs> <laughs> My sword's bigger. You're going to be like, oh, that poor girl, her sword's, her sword's not even sharp. What What's wrong with her? <laughs> Bless her heart. That's what we say in the South. Bless her heart. <laughs> Bless her heart. <laughs> now I know what that means. That's not nice. <laughs> so that's the number one point that I always try to tell everybody is definitely make sure that you're matching your swords. If you choose to do these, so there's a couple of different options. These um, original swords are no longer available from the original manufacturer, unfortunately. However, there are options. So you have, um, so Cult of Athena is usually where I can get uh, swords, but of course, like everybody else, they're out of everything right now. Yeah. Um, they do have the shorter swords, which are these ones. Um, so that's a little bit of a shorter sword. So this is uh, 34 inches versus 38. And while you don't think that that's a big deal. Hey, girl, we all know four inches counts. Sorry, <laughs> 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 I didn't know myself. <laughs> I was like, say I'm it, say it, say it. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> Those four inches are really important. They're, they're really important because if you look at the end of that, <laughs> that's a big deal. That's a that is a big deal, actually. That's a big deal. So. The reason that I bring that up is a lot of people aren't really sure whether they want to commit to any length of sword, right? Like, do I want to drop $150 on this prop that I may or may not like, right? Mm -hmm. So the option is, is you can get the shorter sword, you can get a smaller sword, you can get a practice sword, you can get a lighter sword, whatever works for you. Um, but the thing is, is the placement on your arm for all of this dialect will change. Hmm. So what does that mean? So when you're looking at it from a sword placement, it was designed to hit between your deltoid and your bicep for all, all movements so that you can keep it in one place. Yeah, now, so you can maintain the arm posture, right? The yep, elbow you wanna, and... Exactly. So mm -hmm. all of this was designed to keep the technique, everything the same as um, the original creation, right? So... When you're looking at this, in order to keep that arm posture and keep it nice and lifted, right, this will actually move out on a smaller sword. If you try to put it up here, see what happens? It uh -huh. just like in, it ends up running into your torso. Right, it's which worse you, than an underwire bra. <laughs> it's the worst. Like it'll <laughs> it'll slice right into that or get caught <laughs> in your costuming, which really sucks. Just in case you're wondering. So yeah. you want to make sure that you're moving that out. So just know that if you choose to get a smaller sword, that's totally fine. Um, just make sure that when you're doing it, that you're practicing with that sword. Um, and know that if you upgrade to a longer, more expensive sword, that you may have to tweak some of the positions that you're used to yeah. um, just to get that 
uh, get the same look that you are already starting to maintain the posture and the, um, and the position of the arm. I would have never even thought, I mean, it makes sense now, but I mean, if you don't, if you have one sword and that's all you've ever had, like right. you don't really even think about that. But um, I think that's part of, I mean, one of the reasons why I've seen this dialect before and I'm just like, oh, that looks real, like the arm posture, the upliftedness, everything is still there. And right. part of that is because of the, the sword and exactly how it just naturally places on the arm. So I found that so exactly. Fascinating. So the, the whole idea between this was to try and uh, modify the movements as minimally as possible, right? We want to make it as easy as possible to pick up a sword and follow the dialect. We wanted it to be as improbable as possible, if that's even the word. It <laughs> is now. We're want, it today. is now. We're making up words. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we wanted it to be as improbable as possible. We wanted it to be easy to follow. And then to add some spice, if you will, right? So yeah. there's the arm posture, there's free posture, and there's also balanced posture. Um, Kara and I have also put together a lot of the um, faster movements. So you'll see some of it on YouTube um, here and there where we've done um, slow dialect and then we've added some of the older, old school, you know, fast dialect and modified mm -hmm. it a little bit to keep it, you know, interesting. Um, so all of this was designed to just take what you already know and elevate it with a sharp, shiny object. Yeah, I, I love that. And that's what I really, I think that's what I really love is it's like, it's not, it, it is a, a vocabulary in its own, but it's not like a whole different thing that you're like, oh, but in this instance, you know, we're not gonna you don't do that. our elbow. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 you still keep your elbows. <laughs> you still keep your yeah. elbows. Um, what, well, one of the things that I loved, of course, I've watched, you know, all of the course, um, and one of the things that I really loved was you, you, rem you go through and you talk about things that I would have never even thought about, like how you transition the sword from one place to another to maintain the beautiful, you know, stylization of our transitions. And, you know, at one point you, re you were, well, throughout the whole thing, you like remind us of our, um, our, of our alignment. Um, like for instance, like you, you kept reminding, like, uh, make sure that your, you know, your your spine is stacked. I can't remember the exact words, but basically, like, make sure that your neck is aligned so that you're, because you're, you're adding weight onto your head. And, and every time you said that, I was like, oh yeah, you know, because when we had that computer head, yeah, everybody like everybody's forward, is forward and so, anyway. Yeah, so I really appreciated that reminder because you go when you go through this, you're talking about sword safety and like the safety in your body, like how it can affect your neck and your shoulders and your back and like what to do to to not help, you know, not allow that to affect it. And the strengthening exercises that you gave, um, just even in the first hour, I was just really appreciative of all of those. Um, and then I, that's when I was like, I really like, I actually really like this sword <laughs> diet. Like I'm gonna order, I'm gonna order a big fancy sword now. <laughs> yeah, so that's a really good point. Like um, a lot of people wanna pick it up and like throw it on their head, and eat, right? Um, Kitty. What I find, I, sorry. I was, Squirrel, I see your cat back there. Squirrel, I was gonna say, she's probably running around. She's chasing something. Good luck with that. <laughs> um, which is even funnier because she's a three-legged cat that can catch mice and birds. Go figure. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I know, she's crazy. Anyway, um, what I was saying is that um, when you're really starting with a sword, and especially when you're working with it on arm, that sword is anywhere from two to three pounds, right? Which you don't think is that big of a deal, right? You don't think, hey, you know, it's three pounds. Like, how bad could it be? Well, when you're doing it for an hour and you're not used to lifting that with your right arm for an hour above your head, right? Because yeah, yeah. the idea is to keep your posture the same. So you want to be able to hold that above your head for any length of time. And you want it to be, you want it to stay steady. Well, right. that's a big freaking deal when you're holding three pounds above your head. Yeah, because my arm for... is getting tired watching you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so the idea there is that um, you want to make sure that you're aware of where your body is, right? You want to make sure that your neck is in alignment with your spine so that the large erector muscles in your back are actually supporting the structure underneath rather than the smaller cervical muscles while you're standing here, you know, sideways, which you normally do. Right. Um, you'll see a lot of people like trying to you know, hold that sword on their head, which I'm guilty of too, right? You're at a performance <laughs> and you're like holding that, like right. it's still balanced. It still counts. It's the Billy Goat. It still <laughs> counts, right? Um, but, 
the more you practice keeping it aligned, the less stress you're having on your back, the less stress you have on your arm. You know, moving that around using that tiny deltoid muscle is a whole lot harder than if you engage your traps in the back and engage the lat muscle underneath to support the shoulder rather than trying to muscle it through with this tiny muscle that was never designed to hold that kind of weight for any length of time. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, and of course you're going to talk about anatomy. So I'm already like sold. I'm, I'm already <laughs> you're like, I'm in. <laughs> yes, yes. The less stress on the deltoids. I love it. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So, okay. Well, awesome. And then, so I really liked that and the strengthening exercises. Um, and I also loved how you, you mentioned throughout the class, um, like for instance, there were a couple of things in the body wave that you said, you know, um, keep in mind that in the body wave, we do this and you're going to feel it more with a sword because of this reason. And I was like, ah, and so it was kind of like, be careful of this thing. That's this tendency that tends to happen in the body wave because it wants to happen even more when you are balancing a sword. So, yeah. you know, that reminder of the technique, you know, like, don't forget right. the technique of it, even though you've added this challenge. Um, so I just really appreciated that part throughout the, throughout the class as well. So, awesome. so it's, it's something just to keep in mind, like everybody wants to make these moves like giant, right? They don't want to keep it muscular. They want to make it as big as possible. But when you put a sword on your head and then you put four people deep on stage, does it really need to be that big? Right. That's a good point. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't need impressive. to be that big. You're already like, hey, look, there's a sharp, shiny object on my head. Check that yeah. out. I just want to stand here for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. That's true. That's true. There's already, yeah, there's already four people on there. So probably, you know, want to want to make sure that you aren't swinging that sword around too much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. And then I'm going to check the comments real fast. Let's see. So Lacey says, hey, girl, hey. Hey. <laughs> hey um, and hi, everyone else that's joining. If you have any questions, um, just feel free to, to jump in there. Hi, Lisa. We were just talking about your basket dialect. Um, so hi, Lisa. Hi. So yeah. So let's see. I have a whole list of things that I was talking, that I was like going through when I was watching this course. So just to kind of back up on what the course is and what this course is about. So, um, you know, one of the amazing, one of oh, the, probably one of the few amazing things that have been going on through um, this COVID situation is that more and more people are teaching online, more and more people are teaching at home. And so this course actually Jen taught in a Facebook Live a few months back. So this is a four hour course because it was a four week course. And then we've taken it, edited it, Jen's added some, some additional drill videos into that. Um, and so on and so forth. So, um, so I think there's a few of you like KP, I know that you've taken this course before and you were really excited to see that Jen was um, joining the, the group. And then we have more sword stuff planned coming out, but I love that this starts with the foundations. It's like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna throw out all of the, all of the partner sword dialect yet, yeah. <laughs> yet until yeah. we make sure that everybody has the foundations of it. And so I right. really, I like how this is just kind of building on it. And that's actually like kind of side note why I did the hand florio, I released the hand florio class last week on FCBDU is because there are all these other things coming out. And I was like, oh, I really feel like we need a solid hand florio class first before yeah. we add in all of this other stuff. Exactly. So this is kind of like, this is the, like, if you've never started from swords and you, you know, you're, or you need a refresher or you're like, I just don't know if I'm whatever, like this is the, this is the perfect course for that. Cause it's like an intro to it. Um, so something so, to add to that, yeah. everybody always asks. Um, so the reason that I did this intro course in the first place was um, everybody was trying to get their hands on the DVD originally, which, you know, we can't get anymore. Um, and then what I was finding was that people were having the basic movements, but they couldn't get the transitions between the movements, right? So this actually will help um, put all of those pieces together. So even if you've already learned the dialect or you you know, try it out on your own or put it all together from watching bits and pieces that you can find. This actually will take you through the whys. The why of why did we do it this way? How did we get here? What is proper alignment? Because anybody can do it just by watching a video, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what are the in-between pieces that kind of put those together to help you be able to actually make it improv and not choreography? Yeah, yeah, nice. The geeky details of it the all. The geeky, I know. I'm you, like, know I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm down for that. You know, I'm down for that. I'm a geek. It is what we it had is. A, 
a couple of questions come in actually. KP says, and, I, and her classes were awesome. Um, oh, thank you. had a really great question. As a petite lady with short arms and a short tor torso, Ooh, yeah. is it better or easier to have a shorter sword? That is a great question. And in fact, something I'd never really thought about until I started teaching. And then you're around a whole bunch of different body types, right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, that is personal preference. So some people um, are very, very petite, right? We're talking like four foot 11 and just tiny. Um, and having a 38 inch sword versus a 34 inch sword may be a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the sword work, um, the transitions, they're big sweeping movements. And if you have a shorter wingspan, a, smor a smaller sword may actually be a whole lot easier for you to deal with. Um, that doesn't mean that everybody has to have a short sword. Um, if you're on stage most of the time, unless you're a total sword geek, you're not even gonna notice the length of the sword if it's the same style of sword, mm -hmm. right? So say you have someone who's pushing six feet dancing with someone who's about four foot 11, right? Well, they can use a longer, a longer sword like what I have, but the shorter sword may be more doable for the petite individual. So right. they may be able to get the same exact arm placement as what we're teaching in this class that I do with a longer sword, but they may need the shorter sword to make that happen. Yeah, that's a great point because the audience is going to, well, you want to be, first of all, you want to feel really confident with the sword that you're dancing with, I'm assuming. Right. Right? <laughs> you want to feel really confident. Yeah, 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 100%. <laughs> and the audience is going to notice probably more if, if you're struggling, not necessarily yep. struggling, but if your movements, if your movements are very different than right. the other people that you're dancing with, like every, every, of course, everybody is different. The movements are going to be a little different anyways. But I mean, like what you were talking about with the sword placement, like if everybody's standing there in this beautiful pose, I don't know, doing a talk seam or something. And so, you know, somebody's sword is here and it's like, <laughs> you know, like it's their for their sword and it's like, you know, the audience is, it's going to take very uncomfortable. Time. Right. It's like those people do not look really comfortable. So that's right. a great point. So McKenna, I guess the, a good, a good solution to that would be to have your taller people order, the, have your taller people order the law, order the sword and then try it out and then see if you need to get the smaller one. Totally. Now, now in these courses, we're not, we're going, we're going single sword, but yep. later on, if somebody was going to do a double sword, then maybe they would want to use a shorter one, two shorter ones or something like that. Yeah. So again, it completely depends on your wingspan and your preference. Mm -hmm. gotcha. I can use the longer swords for double. Um, and I have before, but my wingspan isn't as long as somebody um, who say is pushing six feet and has a really long wingspan. That is going to be a whole lot more graceful than the shorter sword. I actually use two of the shorter swords for my double sword work, mm -hmm. um, mostly because my arms are shorter than I want them to be. Right. So um, it's easier for me to do the shorter sword. And, and it's like, I don't know, maybe a uh, half a pound lighter sometimes depending on the type of sword that you get so when you have two swords you have no way to catch them if they're trying to fall um, sometimes uh -huh. the lighter swords are a little easier um, when you're trying to balance two at a time okay. so it's up yeah. to personal preference you can do whatever works for you just make sure you practice with it I guess is the bottom line. right yeah that's yeah I never I never even really thought about that until we started talking about you know like you know double swords and single swords and arm length and I was like that makes total sense, especially like what I teach, you know, I, t I teach about like different proportions of people and like all the different body right. groups, but when you put a sword with it, it just wasn't anything that was really familiar uh, to me. So I really appreciated that. Um, okay, we have a few more questions. Oh, hi, Kara. Kara says, hi, ladies, baby and I are tuning hi. in. Yeah, so, so Kara and uh, Jen both have little ones, right? So maybe yep. like you guys both you, you, you ladies, you people, you all friends, <laughs> I'm trying to make sure you guys, um, you all uh, moved, you and Kara both moved to the Pacific Northwest yeah. out of Salt Lake City. And then you kind of settled in and started teaching classes and then started having babies and all that stuff. <laughs> so you don't really travel a whole lot, especially not nope. international travel or anything yeah. like that. So this is a great opportunity for people to study with you that normally would not be able to study with you and, and Kara coming soon, right? Kara, yeah. hopefully coming soon. Kara's coming soon, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa says, is that a kitty photo bombing you? Yeah, Lisa. Yeah, totally, 100%. <laughs> I have to go back and check because I kind of feel like at one point she was pooping, but I have to go back. Nah. She was digging. <laughs> Just that, that would be the ultimate kitty bomb. I um, mean, Teresa yeah. says, oh, this is a great question. And I forgot to ask you this one before. Um, 
Okay, uh, Teresa has a great question. Is there a way to take the class if you do not have a sword? Um, you know, that is a good question. You can, you can absolutely learn all of the concepts and everything um, without a sword. I, I know that there are online, I have yet to actually order any. There are um, practice swords that are like made out of wood or maybe it's hard duty ca cardboard. I don't really know. I've never actually played with them. But there's a few people out there that are making the practice swords too that are like uh, 25 bucks. So they're super yeah. cheap. If you aren't ready to commit to $150 price tag, which is, I understand, quite hefty. Um, or if you're not even sure that you want to dance with a sword or if you even like me as an instructor, if you want to come and try it out, you can absolutely use... Um, whatever works for you. You probably won't be able to do the balancing portions of it, but the balancing right. portions, in my opinion, are actually a whole lot easier than the uh, sword work on arm and in free position um, because yeah. of the angles of like your different joints and where you have to line up to get the correct posture and all of that. So um, in previous like workshops, we've brought dowels, like wood dowels. I was gonna ask um, you, yeah, dowel rods from like the home, home yeah. Lowe's. Not like Lowe's. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Wherever you want to shop, go there. <laughs> whatever for political reasons you wish to shop. <laughs> whatever political reason you wish to shop, go there. You can get um, dowels pretty much anywhere, um, and they're like a few bucks. And so that will give you the idea of what um, the movement should feel like. It's going to be a little different, obviously, um, like angle of the wrist and where your, um, your shoulder and your um, elbow end up but it will give you the overall idea. It'll give you a feel for how I teach. It'll give you a feel for what the concept is and if you even want to do that. And then the the forward part of that is if you do find out that you like it, then um, there's several different options that are more affordable, like the shorter sword, which is runs about $50 versus the longer swords, which is like $150 to 200, depending on where you get them. Um, there's also different styles of sword that may appeal more to you. Like there's the Moorish scimitar, which is, a much broader um, end point um, than the Hawksbill, or there's the more dainty belly dance swords that are, you know, anywhere from twenty to fifty dollars, depending on what you're looking for. So there's lots of different options. Okay, I feel like this is the child in me, the five year old coming out. But you know, I always sword, I always did sword fighting with you know, <laughs> paper rules. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know. You yeah, you can totally do that. Practice your transitions and holding and everything with, you know, totally could. paper. <laughs> yeah, you totally could. You totally could. I and then you can sort of fight have done that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, you can get creative that way. But yeah, dowel rod or um, I don't know about like a broom or something like that might be a little too long, the but that makes broom's sense. too heavy. Balancing it on your head. Yeah, once you can find the balance, that really comes mm -hmm. a lot, I find, with your technique. Like, if you wonder if you're bouncing during a shimmy, you know, or if your head's put a sword on your head, <laughs> put a sword on your head. It's going to tell you real fast, you know, Yep, and real fast. That we don't practice um, like these transitions and the different way. I loved how the, the toxin worked with the sword balanced on the arm. And I loved how you said, like, this is how it, this is how not the technique changes, but this is how the movement like isn't as big and why, you know, like things like that. Like I, I was like, oh, I was just, I got so much information <laughs> from watching. I was so <laughs> yes, fascinated. Winning the game. <laughs> I was like, yes, this is great. Okay, so I'm gonna read some more um, things, more things here. So Teresa, I don't know if that's helpful, but um, maybe I would love to see, well, this is a great thing. I would love to see what people come up with for their practice. Sword, oh, absolutely. Right? I want to see and it like too. You said, this is a great opportunity for people to test it out and see like, do I even want to, do I like sword dialect? Or yep. Do I want to do sword dialect? Um, just another thing, like that's one of the many reasons I love FCBDU. It's like, you can try out all of these things with all of these different instructors that we're continuing to bring in. You can try swords, you can try, um, you can try Lacey's interval class, you can try a level one class, you can take Mega's deep dive, like you can, and then as we introduce more and more instructors, if you like that, then we're bringing in more, or you can go and hire those instructors for, take their online classes or go to their website, hire them for workshops, like all of those things, like really bringing the community together and an opportunity to, yeah, try things out, like get your troop together and take this class and see, hey, do we all want to invest in swords? You know, that kind of thing. So, um, okay, so let me see. So, uh, Kara says, chiming in, 
Oh, Casey says I have a short and long. I'm five in five foot, so I prefer the long one. Oh, actually, so she prefers the long one. So maybe Teresa, maybe when COVID stuff's over, you can go to Casey's house. <laughs> you all, you <laughs> Kara says, chiming in, I'm five two with a shorter wingspan, but I prefer the longer hand wide yeah. hawk's bill. Okay, great. Yeah. Oh, Virginia's here. And Teresa says, very helpful since I'm still unemployed. I would like to wait and see if I like sword before I purchase. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Great, great point. Um, and you can even, you know, just like watch the video and see if it's yeah. interesting before you decide you're going to go dig in your Christmas wrapping. <laughs> paper. I mean, wrapper. there's so many options here. <laughs> I automatically um, go with what can I, what can I hit people? What can with? I hit people? <laughs> <laughs> yep, hundred percent. I may or may not have done that a few thousand times. I don't know. Right? I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, so let's see. This. Oh my gosh. So I have my. I have to share this. I have my iPad over here that I'm like scrolling, and then I have my notepad over here. And I promise you, I just went to my notepad and did this. <laughs> 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 this is what trying to like move it around my husband's done this on his book before because he's so used to his kindle like, oh, that's that's amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh okay so let's let's just talk about where people if they do want to buy a sword like if they like i bought my sword yesterday actually so it's not even here yet so i'm what i'm excited about is getting my sword and maybe i'll do like an unboxing video of my sword <laughs> yes and then, do do like I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna do a video of me practicing sword dialect so we can all kind of go through this process of of exploring this together and then you can laugh at me as many times as I drop it it's fine <laughs> if you haven't dropped it you will drop it soon don't worry about the it the only time and still to this day I remember this the only time I have ever dropped my sword knock on wood is the one time I was trying to make it stick a little bit more. So, yep. so Liz, um, my dear friend Liz, and also Dave Yanni, she would take a candle and use candle yep. wax, just like at the mm -hmm. balancing point to make it, I guess, like you said, like sticky. a little more rough, a little sticky. Yep. And I was like, I'd always like turn it down. And then this one, I we were in a library and of course, a library is not designed for <laughs> loud sword dropping yeah. or anything. And I was like, you know, maybe I should just in case, because if this sword hits the ground in this library, it's going to be like crazy. So I did. And damn it, I dropped the sword. The one oh, and yeah. only freaking time I dropped the sword was when I was trying to make it stick more. <laughs> 100%. But I feel like when I get a new sword, it's probably going to happen, you know. Oh, it will happen. I've dropped it. I can't tell you how many times I've dropped it trying to do something stupid usually <laughs> um but i mean i've dropped it in performance as well um i mean they're unpredictable it's like dancing with fire like you never know is it going to behave today or not like there's some days there is nothing in the world that is going to keep that dang thing on my head mm -hmm. um and there's other days where i can put it on my head and a berber crawl and back bend and whatever the heck else i want to do on it and it won't come off to save my life so if you haven't dropped it it's going to happen. Just go happen. with it. Yeah. <laughs> Just get, get over it. It's kind of like, you yeah, know, no. before work, like you're going to, at some point, you know, recovery. Not, you, know, like get back yeah. up or, you know, some days levels happen and some days they just don't, you know, that yeah. kind of thing, I guess. Uh, um, one 100%. of the things that you said earlier when you were talking about buying a sword and looking for a sword and actually the heavier ones are easier. It reminds me of a couple of, couple of instances. Um, the first one, it reminded me of hula hooping yeah <laughs> with a hula hoop you you know people think that a lighter one is better but a heavier one actually stays on your hips momentum more yeah. that momentum and that like heavy factor and then also finger symbols like a lot of people when they start those big heavy finger symbols are intimidating but when you use the big heavy finger symbols it almost forces you to relax your hands a little bit yep. more and to use your whole hand when you zill and it keeps you from going to like from speeding up you know because you actually make the full sound so that was a really great thing that you said because i would have thought a lighter sword is going to be easier and if i drop it you know it won't be as dramatic wow, or whatever yeah, yeah. but yeah a heavier sword makes more sense especially since i'm not creating the little a taco. little taco in my headdress and then something else that you said just kind of another side note of all of the sword you're going to hear all the sword mishaps this one is actually <laughs> amazing i think i have a photo of this so like i said dave yanni and for many people that have that know dave yanni we there were several years that we only wore full headdresses full turbans like full on that's what we wore 
every time 100 degrees in Alabama outside oh, we're wearing full charge. Lord. Yeah, and so when you put the sword on your head, depending on what was going on, you didn't even feel the sword. The way that you, the way that you knew that it wasn't falling was it didn't fall. <laughs> you just had to put it on and hope, right? Um, well, Haley, one of our earliest Dave Yanni members, put the sword on her head, and of course you can't feel it. Turns out the sword was balanced on a piece of jewelry the entire song. Oh my and God. Mega had Mega saw it like when they were pivoting around and she was like super nervous for this the whole time because this was like 2004, 2004, maybe early 2005. And Carolina came to Alabama of all places. Carolina came to Alabama and was at this show and Haley had this sword like balanced on this piece of jewelry. <laughs> so that's like and they're done that balance factor, right? Yeah, but right. Yeah, that's true. You can't feel it. And so a heavier mm -hmm. sword that you can feel with just enough padding that it doesn't hurt for you to say practice for an hour or whatever makes total sense that I never would have even. Yeah, the heavier, it's it's kind of a, um, it's counterintuitive when you think about it. The heavier the sword is, the more you can feel it. It's um, heavier on your neck, right? So it takes a lot more practice to get used to um, really keeping the alignment of the neck so that you're not stressing the cervical spine. Um, but it, I don't know, like what Kara was saying earlier, I'm not that tall. I'm five foot five, five foot six. Um, I don't have a huge wingspan, but I prefer the longer sword. I think it's easier to balance. Um, the balance point is more intuitive to me personally. Um, it's easier, the, the grip is longer, the grip is wider. It's mm -hmm. easier, it's more comfortable in your hand. Um, it's easier to fill on your head it moves better in space and it doesn't do this weird windmill thing that, um, you know, if you turn too fast and like it just will continue, the momentum will just keep pushing it. Um, it doesn't do that as much as my smaller sword, which again, you wouldn't think when you're thinking about it because a sword is a sword, right? But when you start looking at balance points and weight and, you know, a few ounces or a few inches actually makes a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. That, can, that makes total sense. So McKenna, um, you might want to start with a with a bigger sword and see how it goes and um maybe order from a place that that would offer you to switch it out or um i'm sure i mean like some of these swords are so hard to get right now that i'm sure if you found one and you got the longer one and you were decided to go with a shorter one that somebody would buy your longer sword oh you know? absolutely so i think that that would probably be be okay or if you know somebody who has one um you know try it out for a week and see you know, if, if you like the shorter sword or if you want to try the longer sword, um, like I have three swords. <laughs> so somebody after COVID, you know, anybody who's closer to me can actually try any of them um, and see, you know, which one you like more. Yeah, I'm looking forward to after COVID for so many, so many reasons, but also like for you to come down here and let, let's like play in the studio and um, I'm in. <laughs> go live and like, you know, ask questions and we can actually like show what's going on and people can see my complete inability to do like the new sort of dialect with the thing. I'm like, live I put it on my head and dance all day long, but Same. when we start doing these things, I don't know how to do that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, okay. So a couple, let me see if there's any other questions. Lisa says, I have to go to rehearsal. Can't wait to take the class. Um, all right, so any other questions? We'll give it a few minutes. There's a couple, there's a little bit of a lag for Facebook. So if anybody has any questions, um, please feel free to jump in and ask. And let's see, so Jen, we talked about, we talked about the, where the dialect kind of came from and what everything, what the focus was as far as like maintaining the still the integrity of the movement and the technique and the posture. We talked about um, how you go into sword safety and handling and strengthening exercises and stuff during the cool down, which I really appreciated as well. Um, and we talked about what to expect from this sword course. So just a little bit more about that. So this is a four week course. So it's four hours of sword foundations, technique and drills. And so every Saturday in August, another hour will be released. So today, after I say 
thanks everyone and, and go, I'm going to go out and release this first week of sword content. It's available. It's already included in your monthly membership. It will already be in your bundle. All you have to do is go out there and have fun. Um, and you can ask questions, of course, with on any of the any even sections of the of the videos. So you're welcome to do that as well. And then next Saturday morning, super, super early week two will go out. So you've got a whole week to ex I mean, you have long, however long you want because it's FCBDU. So it's there when you're ready. But if you wanted to follow along, you have a whole week to like experience this and, and practice it and then go into the next week. Or if you're coming into this, you know, three or four months later and you're like, I've played with sword before, I just need a refresher, it's it's all right there. So you can really take this class um, any way that you want. And it's separated out. Um, the way that I love that we separated out was like, there's of course the intro and the warm up, and then there's a toxime and a toxime drill. So it's really easy to go back and say like, I don't need to necessarily go through all of this, but I want to follow her in the drill again because I feel like I need that practice, and I just need to follow somebody and see where the placement of the sword is. So I love that it, we can go back to it and just re -go, go again and again, just like we would do in like a level one of anything, right? And so level one, level one is always there like it's not that you ever graduate from that so level one for life <laughs> right level one for life so i feel like you, it's not something that you ever graduate from if anything you're just adding on so that's what we're doing with this one you're it's level one and then after this we're going to add on after these four weeks there's four more weeks and then there's duet concepts and so we just kind of keep going but we're basically growing um growing with everybody as we do this so for sure if we don't start with advanced stuff um we want people to be really safe about it Right. Uh oh, we lost your video. Oh, hold on. Okay. So Andy, Andy says, "Awesome, thanks, yay." <laughs> okay. Well, um, did we miss anything? Is there anything else that you wanted to mention? Where do you get your swords? We talked about where it, but we didn't actually talk to them. <laughs> where do you get swords? Is it Amazon? Where do we get swords? Where do we get these? <laughs> where do we get these? Um, okay. So, like I mentioned earlier, everybody and their dog is out of everything. However. I went on last night, so normally I would say Cult of Athena is your best bet. Um, and last week they actually had them in stock and this week they don't. So they kind of pop in and out as their manufacturer is available. Um, so if you're lucky enough to find it on cultofathena.com, um, there's cult the handways. The yeah, Cult, cult with a K. K. Mm -hmm. well, I'm sure we can post that after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hanway, the Hanway Scimitar is the one that's the closest to mine, has a really good balance point about three pounds it's unsharpened um oh that was something else i wanted to mention which we'll come back to um but it's 37 inches long mine is 38 so anywhere from 37 to 38 they're about the same mm -hmm. um and the blade is about 30 to 31 inches um most of their swords do not come with scabbards though so you have to get creative on storage and um there's Don't a lot of places that. what did you scabbards. Call scabbards scabbards that's the sleeve yep that's this thing this thing that it sits oh, in. Oh, I didn't even check mine. Yeah, I, most of them don't. So um, for storage, you can, um, I've seen a number of different things. If you're a seamstress, you can make a little bag for it um, that you can put in and, you know, put a handle on it so it's easy to carry. Um, there's a lot of places out there that are making custom scabbards, so you can Ooh. have them made for you. They are not cheap, fair warning, <laughs> because they're um, leather and, you know, they can be detailed or not. Yeah. Um, but I got I one. Imagine. Wouldn't that be amazing if everybody, oh my gosh, I just had this like vision of <laughs> an entire troop walking into like, let's say reunion and they all have their swords strapped on their side and yeah. they all have like their troop etched into their leather. Uh, on the leather. I'd be, be, awesome. like, <laughs> I'll be like, oh my God, I need that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate um, badass. That would be like, now I have to go do that. Thanks a lot. Look what you did. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so just keep in mind that you may or may not find the holders, the scabbards for them. Um, but Cult of Athena does have the smaller sword, which is the Balade, um, scimitar. Um, they have two versions of that. So just want to put that out there. So they have, um, I think it's the Damascus. Yeah. The Damascus blade. And that has an intricate pattern on it. That's because it's two different types of steel that's been put together. So it kind of looks like a rippling water mm -hmm. effect. And if that's your jam, like definitely do that. But if you're going to do that, I would caution you to make sure that everybody in your troop does the same thing because it will stand out because it's a different shine on the sword. Yeah, the lighting um, and your performance would be a little yeah, bit different. Totally. 
um, it can be somewhat distracting. It's a beautiful sword, but if you are the only one that has it, you'll take out like a sword thumb. Um, and it is significantly more expensive because of that. It does come with the scabbard, though, if you really need to have that. Um, their other one is about a third of the cost of the big sword, which is their Ballade Scimitar, which is um, about 45 bucks versus 150 um, and that one is about two pounds, nine ounces rather than um, three pounds, which is about what mine is. Um, it's about 34 inches long and it does come with a scabbard as well. So if you're not ready to invest in the larger swords or the bigger swords, you can get that one. It's a more affordable option. Um, there's one on there that um, I've had several students purchase that I feel like isn't super helpful. Um, they have a smaller version of the Ballade Scimitar, which is only about 30 bucks which is super tempting when you're trying to learn this, but it is significantly shorter. It's 25 inches long oh. versus my sword, which is 38 inches long. So you'd be better off with a paper, with a Christmas wrapper. With a, yeah, totally. <laughs> um, I've, I've taught people how to, how to do it. And they, some people really like them, but it is significantly lighter. It's only about a pound, four ounces. Um, so it's significantly lighter than the three pound sword. Um, it's, you know, it's something to maybe use for strengthening and whatever else. If you just want to learn how to hold the hilt or whatever else, it's it's an option, but it's not something that I would recommend you get for long term because it's not as easy. I even had trouble balancing it because it's so light. Wow. Um, it moves really hard. Like if you're ever going to dance outside, for example, mm. the heavier swords, way better. Any yeah. gust of wind is going to take a one pound sword right off your head, but it's not going to really move a three pound sword unless you're having like, you know, gale force winds, in which case you probably should be outside. Yeah. But... <laughs> so if you can't get it on Cult of Athena, I went online and found there's three different places. And to preface this, I've never ordered from any of them, but from the specs and they are here in the U.S., you should be able to get your swords from them. Um, Knifecenter.com. That's where I ordered mine um, yesterday. I was going to say. Virginia. So yeah. those of you that are over on the East Coast of the U.S. Um, Probably a really good option because it's close to you. Um, I would, you know, imagine they said that they had several in stock. So if you really want the longer sword, it's a little bit more expensive. It was one hundred sixty one ninety five or something like that. Yeah, shipping so it's like, bucks. so it's like, yeah, it's heavy. Investment. It's heavy and awkward. <laughs> yeah, you're like, let's do it. <laughs> Um, there is swordsdirect.com. Um, that one is called a Hawksbill. So if you want to search online, you can find either the Henway Scimitar or the um, Hawksbill Scimitar. It's the same thing. Um, that one is 170, but the difference is it's not a leather wrapped hilt. So the handle itself is wood, which on my smaller sword is a wooden handle. So um, a couple of things there, and that's personal preference. I prefer the leather. I get sweaty palms and really anxious when I perform, especially with something that could fall off my head. Um, I find that the leather um, wrapped hilts are easier for me um, and don't get as squirrely, um, but other people prefer wood, so totally your call. Um, and then there's a, a random one that I also found, um, which is also located in the U.S. is gothicfantasy.com, and that one was $180. But it's all the same sword, all the same specs, all the same weight. Um, so you have options if you must have it right now. Otherwise, Cult of Athena stocks and restocks. You can sign up for their alerts um, that when they do restock a certain one, they'll you know notify you. I get alerts every time they restock so I can let my students know um, okay. when they restock. And I can post these links in the in the course as well so people don't have to like think about it or whatever. So there'll be, of course, the Perfect. link this there'll be links to um Afro temple which is some of the music that you use in the classes as, as well um kp says oh wait and oh andy has a great wait okay let me back up <laughs> kp says cult of athena does come with them but they are not that great i'm assuming you should talk about the scabbards yeah um we need to find so if anybody knows of a leather worker that is interested in creating scabbards for I want one. Well, I want a new one. <laughs> hooked up with that. <laughs> so hook me up. I want a new one. Mine's right? dying. A slow death. <laughs> we need that. Um, and then Andy says you can put it up at your home entrance as a symbol of protection. It works beautifully. That's a great idea. So um, even just storing your swords, like where do you store your sword? Oh yeah. Two little hooks and put it over your door or whatever. Yeah. But those thirty dollars ones that you were talking about. Don't uh, store your sword in a scabbard. 
Don't store your sword in a scabbard. Okay. Don't store your sword in a scabbard. It holds any kind of um, any kind of moisture against the blade, uh. and it will tarnish and or rust depending on if you have any nicks. So I store mine in. Sometimes I forget and I leave it in a scabbard. If you have a leather one, it's not as bad. But some of these are like a felt or um, a fake leather. And so those are really bad about not letting the blade breathe. Um, so I store mine in a um, cotton towel. Um, and then it's, it serves as a, a way to wipe it down as well um, when you're ready to, to perform with it. Um, you will find that you'll get fingerprints all over it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, you're leaving oil, you're leaving um, whatever dust and debris and whatever else um, was on your sword when you were working with it, you know, definitely wipe it down and put it away um, if you're not going to store it. If you're going to store it out in the open air, it's obviously going to be fine, but just be aware of where you're storing it. Like, don't put it in the bathroom. I know it sounds weird, but I've had that happen. <laughs> like, don't store it against your mirror in your bathroom because it's damp in there. Um, you know, you want to make sure that if it's going to be in a closet that it's, you know, taken care of because you just spent 150 bucks on it. You might as well take care of it. Yeah. I was always told, you know, store your sword either flat or hanging flat. Yep. Don't set it on, don't set it down and lean it on something and don't keep it in your car. So yeah, for uh, sure. Don't let it get hot. Super hot. And we, we had a lot of performances and we would have our sword. And then the next day we were going to go do something else and have the sword. And so it was tempting to leave that thing in the car, but then, oh it, yeah. It kind of, it makes the balance off, you know, that's the last It'll thing warp it. go up somewhere. And then you have a, you put it on your head thinking oh, I've done this all. I just did this yesterday. And then it's not, it's all out of balance or something. So, yep. um, and then KP says, did I already say this one? Yes, I have one like that. And I got a longer one. I don't like the little one. So, um, yeah. so kinda, again, a lot of people a hazard. Are, like, they're thinking that the longer one is better. Um, and then Andy says, are those or are those options international and do we have any? And you know, I should reach out, Virginia, I don't know if you're still here, Virginia, um, Violet, she is over in Germany and she probably has, I'll reach out to her and see if she has any international um, sword vendors too. So that's a great, um, a great point. So thank you, Andy, for that question. I will find out. Unless Jen, do you know? I don't know. I have not, um, I've not had that question. Yes, okay. I don't know. I would assume there's, um, I know Cult of Athena has an international thing on the bottom, but I haven't really paid attention. I'm sure it's not cheap if they are not local. Right. They'll all, yeah, they'll all be international. They'll all ship international, but what's the... Yeah, I don't know how much that's going to be because I know it's like 20 or 30 bucks to ship na you know, in domestic, but mm -hmm. I can't imagine how much it would be. I would be concerned about customs too, going through customs. Um, something that would be considered a weapon probably would get hold, held up there um, okay. if it's coming out of another. I, I ordered a book recently from my friend and um, yeah. And so when I ship it to her, like should we shipped it to me instead of to her in the UK. And then, um, but when I, because of customs and tariffs and stuff. And then when I send it to her, it's, it's, has to be something like oh she left this at my house <laughs> yeah right <laughs> way around some of those things yeah so, exactly like, but it was the only place that we could find the book so there might be something um internationally that's already across the pond too so i'll look and see what i can find okay um yeah. there might be something across there already we'll i can't imagine it. there wouldn't be i know because it, there's people all over the world dancing sword and sword and the sword dialect too um, McKenna says mine is about 35 inches. It's the Validity scimitar. scimitar. Yep. yep. So that's probably. It's pretty common. That's a pretty common one that most people will get. Um, cause the longer swords there, they don't last online for very long. So a lot of people, their only option is to find the shorter one. And a lot of people really like them. I like it for double. It works really well for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but I find that for the, um, Damiana dialect, I prefer the longer one. Yeah. 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 Okay, very cool. And there's, um, you know, there's a lot of sword, not, there's not a lot, there are a few different sword dialects out there that um, some of them stem from the same roots, like yours, yours is basically the Davina, uh, Davina dialect, and then you and Kara have taken it and expanded on it since then, um, and, and all the duet stuff and whatnot. And then I think that there are um, some other dialects out there. Um, I know, like I know that Black Cat Black Cat Studio Online is another great another great uh, website to learn props. They're a membership thing, and I checked in with Soul because I was like, oh, we're 
having sword too. I don't want to mess. I don't want to like step on your toes, but their dialect is actually different. So also if you're in uh, a troupe and you all want to be able to dance improvisationally with sword, um, make sure that you're learning the same dialect. And just to kind of clarify, the Davina dialect is Salt Lake City based. So that Davina was you and Kara, Melody, like that, that kind of dialect. So um, yeah, so there's just kind of make sure that you <clears throat> are just evaluating all the different sword dialects that are out there and making sure that you're working together. What happened to me was um, I had a student that was here in Portland and she moved um, about three or four hours away and then she was coming back to do a performance and I was like, let's do a sword duet. She's like, great, I've been working on sword. And she shows up at the house and we go to practice and I couldn't follow anything that she was doing. <laughs> I was like, what's that? <laughs> What are you so, doing? So like, Never mind. You do a sword solo. <laughs> and I'll, I'll do my thing. It'll be fine. <laughs> so yeah, just uh, just being clear on on that, making sure that you're you know, and if you love sword and you've already done, uh, you know, another kind of dialect, then this is a great one to if, you know, if you're interested in just kind of trying them out. So yeah, so just dialect is dialect. It depends on the person that you know created and shared and, and then it evolves kind of from there yep so um okay all right well i think that's it that's all, that's all i had i don't know if you have oh any i got i'm sure i'm oh, sure they missed something but order the sword non-sharp oh yeah that's right. what i wanted that's to go back to make sure um, that sharp or don't pay so, extra sharpened yeah some people prefer sharpened um, blades. I have several friends that dance with sharpened blades. I I hurt myself too much. <laughs> I'm very accident prone. Um, I've actually managed to gouge my shin with the actual point of the sword, just dropping it. Cause you know, your instinct is to try and catch it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I've, exactly, like you're trying to, you're trying to catch it. If you have a sharpened blade and you're not used to it, cause most people are not used to that. Um, you're going to slice your hand open. I actually had um, someone in one of my classes drop it on their foot and, you know, gouge it pretty good, like to the point that they couldn't keep doing the class. Um, I've had people slice their hands open. So when I do workshops and stuff, I require our um, swords to be unsharpened for that reason. Because again, your inclination, you're not even going to think about it. If it falls off your head, you're going to try and grab it because you're going to try and save it. And um, you will absolutely injure yourself so be careful when you choose a blade most of them will come unsharpened you can pay extra to have them sharpened if that's really what you want to do mm -hmm. um but they're sharp and sh sharp and shiny objects right, um, right. I, they don't need to be actually sharp to be yeah. impressive on stage you know that's a great point and i want to bring this up because it was a, it's something to think about so we of course daviani we all have these swords and at one point, you know, they, people started dancing with the swords like what you the, what you have. And of course, some of us were just like, ooh, those are awesome. You know, we want to do it. We want to do it. Yeah, we want to do it. And and at that point, uh, Mega was like, I don't want to go to those. This was early on before, you know, everybody started dancing with them. She's like, I don't want to use those swords because they look really dangerous. I mean, not that they were, but they look dangerous yeah. and sharp. And in Alabama, we actually did a lot of family events and children's mm. events. So we did a lot of yeah. park events and outdoor in the park type of things. And we brought at the end, like children come up to the stage and we showed yeah. them the dance. And I want to touch that. Yeah. yeah. And so we were like, we don't need anything that this kids will be scared of. Um, and we don't need anything that if it falls, it's going to hurt somebody and we don't need anything that if it's setting down and somebody's curious about it, like little hands. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, that's something to take into consideration is when you're, I mean, that's a whole other topic, but like when you're, yeah. when is, when is a great time to perform with a sword and when do you need to maybe not use a not sword? Not do it. Yep. Use a basket or something like that. <laughs> use something that's a little gentler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Something a little softer. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, Jen, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so I'm pretty excited. excited. I was waiting for my sword. When I ordered it yesterday, it was like three, it ships in three to five business days. And it was like, like, ship now. I know. And then I was like, I looked at all the shipping options and I was like, I could have it priority. I could have it. And I was like, Deanna, you waited 17 years. <laughs> you don't have to have this sword. You don't have to have it tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, if you're asking me, you do. I'm just saying. I just get so excited about these things. Look, I need it right now. 
come on i'm so it's spoiled right amazon is like yeah oh, same in an instant hour. gratification where's my right sword now. i ordered it at where's eight my sword? <laughs> it is now 12 o'clock and i need it right now yes a drone should be isn't like a drone should be <laughs> that would be amazing <laughs> i would order another sword just so it would be delivered like that i know oh speaking of speaking of carrying swords um there has actually so i said we were gonna leave and then i lied so casey had a great question what about a harness to have on your back to pull out during the performance so I mean, like Zena? you could, they're like Zena, like, yeah. um, so that is a good question. How do you get it on stage with you? If you're not going to carry it on, um, people get very creative. Um, I have hidden it in my skirt folds. I have, I, I don't get that creative anymore. That's way too much work. I, I gotta be honest. <laughs> I like, I go place it where I want it. Um, it's look at, look what's in there. I've had people, um, actually, I had somebody do this and I have no idea how she did it, but she actually put it down the back of her skirt so that the hilt was just sticking out and then she pulled it out like a magic trick. Uh huh. Um, I, I would ruin that just so you know, I am not that talented. <laughs> so um, you could, the, the thing is, is that if you put it on your back, then it makes movement difficult. And a lot of the um, sword dialect has... Um, movement through the back which you wouldn't think of because if you actually have it on your arm right this actually moves quite a bit in the back uh, right so mm -hmm. you have to be really careful of um where that is placed it's not impossible i mean if you yeah. could get your whole troop to do the same thing and make it unified or just do it as a solo i've seen people do something similar with different t styles of sword i've personally never tried it myself yeah, I feel like a, having a, sore, a harness on your back would, first of all, be harder. You know, we like to have our backs open so that people can see. It's actually really You're telling, right. like, yeah, for cues and to watch. And um, also, like, I feel like every time you did a body wave, the harness would, like, come up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, like, on your side and not necessarily. Yeah, like, maybe. Yeah, but maybe more, like, you know. Yeah, for sure. I Like, my, um, my sheath, uh, the scabbard itself has a carrying case portion of it so you could carry it like that so it would be behind you but uh -huh. i i mean it's it's not exactly designed for that so dancing with it i think would be really hard yeah um it would be interesting to get creative like even with like a snap on kind of thing on your belt or something you yeah know, like you could find something like that that would be really cool be really neat if someone figures out how to do that i want to see it right? <laughs> um and then Teresa says she works in theater and in shakespeare shows they only use unsharpened blades and the audience can't tell because it's still super no hard. no shiny, and there's right? less likely for injury my friends let me tell you i've seen it it hurts yeah 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 so casey um if you put a harness on your back and you figure that out i would love to see it but also make sure that it's not inhibiting the the movements um and your your cues if you're if you're leading so but yeah it'd be really interesting i'm excited to see what people how their sword practice in, improves like how they build on their sword like i'm excited to, to get it on and like practice moving my arms with this you know three pound sharpie sharp thingy and uh, seeing how it goes. So I'm really excited about this. I really hope that this is um, uh, over soon so that I can come, I wanna see the same person. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like come over here and-, and then I wanna like, come over and see this. <laughs> you're doing this all wrong and you can fix I'm like, it for me. <laughs> what are you doing? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just wanna see, I love seeing people practice. It makes me happy. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah, so feel free to post practice videos in the in the FCBDU members. Yes, please or anywhere you want, like tag us in the videos so we can see you practicing with sword because it'll just inspire everybody else to practice with their swords too. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much, Jen. So Jen Sardina, her, I'm going upstairs right now to hit go on her course. So it'll be available on FCBDU in like 15 minutes or less. Um, and so, yeah, so Jen, thank you so much. I'm excited thank to you. learn all of the wonderful things out there. And thank you so much, members, and anyone else that tuned in FCBDU. You can go directly there, FCBDU, as in university.com. Tons of classes out there already, more classes, more instructors coming, new instructors 
every month, although I have two more instructors that I'm like trying to not put everything out there at one time while also so hard. It is so hard because I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys have to see this makeup video or you have to see this Zill video or you have to see, you know, mm -mm, I have to like, I don't want to overwhelm everybody. <laughs> so it out a little bit. But anyway, so yeah, so go check it out, fcbdu.com. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you, Jen. And thank you everyone for watching. Thank you. Okay, bye. See you later. Bye.